Today, we are looking at the Video Essentials Bundle and how to use it. So if you have not got access to this, leave your name in the comments. You can also take a selfie in the Video Essentials Bundle world, and we will get you access to add it as a collaborator. And once you are added as a collaborator, you're going to go ahead and open up your menu. From your menu, you're going to click on the Create tab. I then recommend going to New World and starting with a blank world. So this is the one in the top left. We'll go ahead and click Create My Essentials. And you can imagine creating your own custom essentials bundle and we've landed here we are in our empty world it feels like the matrix a little bit we're going to press down on the recessed menu button that's on our left hand you can also use this three bar icon and now you can see that we're in my essentials if we head down to the create tab again and then you're gonna have access to either the video essentials 2 bundle this one here or you'll have access to this video essentials bundle here you can click on the eye icon then hit on the three dot icon and click import world and this is going to import the most recently published version of this world and I have published it so that it will not be changed ever so here it is the video essentials bundle and once you've got it imported into your empty world you can now go and customize this you can delete objects and we're gonna look at how to use this to level up our first world the first thing you're gonna want to do is head into build mode let's pull down on our right thumbstick that's gonna bring us into build mode we can grab with our middle finger to move around and as we're moving around you're gonna notice that all of this is on the grid and quite often most users including myself we build on the grid and so if you're importing this into a world that you've already built you might want to import it into an empty world first so that way you can click with your index finger and then press over to the thumbstick to increase the cursor size we can then select all of these objects and slide them upwards and so when we do select this it also has an added benefit that it's going to reset some of these objects that might have gotten glitched when they were imported and so there we go we'll even select that gizmo there perfect and now that we have all of these objects selected if you wanted to deselect something like say you want to deselect this you just click from outside and then drag through the object you want to deselect and then you can drag through again to uh, reselect it and you can see that I'm clicking on this top button which allows you to select that spawn point as the one to spawn in at so if you see I select this and then I press forward on my thumbstick I will respawn right here and if I unselect it and select this one and press forward on my left thumbstick I will spawn at this one and another really cool trick is that if you press forward with your thumbstick this line allows you to select where you'd like to spawn into the world so that is all very cool we're going to go ahead and delete this one because we don't need this one in our world and then we're going to reselect everything which can cause a little bit of lag as you might have just seen there and now that it's selected when we go to the top here we can hover our hand in Put our hand into this cube that appears and then we want to actually grab the slide arrow so you've got the stretch cube the rotate arrow and the slide arrow and we're going to just slide this up into the sky and so what this is going to allow us to do is prevent ourselves from having this on our world so right now it's lifted up off the world so we don't have to worry about that now this is our world spawn point so it is ideal to actually move this into place like say right here in the center of the world and so this is going to be the center of our world and then you'll note that this bundle comes with this giant respawn trigger here and what this does is if you fall off the world you get respawned to this spawn point so that's quite brilliant if you're trying to like make sure you catch people who might accidentally fall off the world or if they fall through the world that's also possible and so what we're going to do is go through these objects and use these to build a little outdoor space and then we're going to go into all of these scripted objects and show you how you can use these scripts on your object so if you have no idea how to script this is perfect because as we're going to go into all of how to use a script, not necessarily how to create the script. If you are interested in how we made these scripts, there's actually videos already published on the channel. They're in the Video Essentials Bundle playlist link right here, as well as in the description of the video. So definitely check those out too. As I'm looking through these objects, the first thing I'm looking at are these trees, and I just think these are so gorgeous. So I want to go and take this to build a little external forest to the world that we're building. And to select, you just click and then drag through the objects you wish to select. And if you want to increase your cursor, just press the thumbstick to the right to increase the size of your cursor. And now that we've got all of this selected, I'm going to go ahead and grab this scale myself bigger by grabbing with both middle fingers hey look it's a merc and i can actually use merc down here to determine how big i want these to be so i'm turning snapping off by pulling down on my thumbstick and with snapping off we can scale this we'll pick up merc and uh, put him in the forest <laughs> there he is 
is rook <gasps> in the forest. That looks pretty good. I think that's a good size for these. And so now we just want to duplicate, move them around, make them a little unique. And so we'll uh, fast forward through that. Merc, you want to help me build this team? On our environment gizmo here, if we open up the properties by putting our hand inside and then pressing the forward on the thumbstick, you can even grab the panel using your ray cast like this with your index trigger. From here, we have a lot of options, like changing the time of day, the fog density, but here I'd like to turn off the grid. So we're building this scene so we no longer need the grid. And now that we've turned it off, we can see underneath, which is perfect for what we're working on. So we're gonna open up our build menu. And so you open your build menu with the recess button underneath your thumbstick, grab the menu with your raycast, just like the other menu we were looking at. And now if we scale this, we can now easily go to our style tab and we're gonna go under bold discovery down to the manual color slider, select a shade of green that's kind of custom to our world. So very nice there. Material type is a solid and a texture. This kind of speckled spots looks like grass to me. So I think I'm gonna go with speckled spots. There's a lot of really cool textures in here, but we're gonna go with that. We are going to do texture scale and small. Align texture to object is gonna be turned off. So that way these objects, when they overlap, the texture just continues through them. So let's go ahead and start painting. Under texture, you're gonna see the roughness and the higher the roughness, the more shiny it is. And so we're gonna go ahead and drop this down to more like 19% which should give us kind of a more rugged, shaggy grass look. Like, what about these rocks that came in the Essentials Bundle? Some beautiful rock design by Merc here. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this up. And if you drop rocks into the crease, it makes the world just look a little bit more natural. So we're just gonna go ahead and put that there, duplicate a copy of these over to here, and then we're going to scale them. And then we can scale these individually so they don't even just look the same. They'll just be very different. We could even turn snapping off and then rotate this to kind of give it this really unique look. Why are there rocks here is the question. And I think one thing that's nice to do in your worlds is to build some sort of natural edges. So you see these kind of like mountains here, this kind of rocky platform. So I'm thinking on this edge, we should build some sort of mountain face that kind of goes upwards. Yeah, this is looking really nice. Duplicate it so we can actually build a peak at the top and then shrink this down. And then we're just gonna kind of build a little mountaintop peak here. Just slide that up just a hair. Awesome. And then we'll come in and grab kind of like this rocky tone. So you just use your thumbstick to the left. So what you'll see here is if you put your hand inside and then thumbstick towards the eyedropper, you can select that color. And so here I'm gonna grab this one. And then with that paint tool selected, we can now paint this. And now we've got that really nice mountaintop there, which looks fabulous. Wow, that's awesome. Water's coming along nicely. What do you think about getting some sort of actual like waterfall coming down here? A really cool trick for a waterfall is to grab one of these cylinders. And what we'll do later is we're going to rotate this cylinder so that the texture is constantly in motion. <laughs> and we have a script for that. So we'll show you how to use that in the video essentials bundle in just a moment. Let's start by just scaling this up getting it into position, select the water here, and then we wanna go into our texture, select the waves format. Although, you know what? Wood looked really good the other day, so maybe we should try the wood grain. It might look really nice. Oh, the texture's aligned incorrectly. Turning this off. Hey, there it goes. That's not terrible, okay. So what you can imagine is once we animate this, it's going to rotate like this. I'll let Merc figure out the rest of making that look awesome because he's a brilliant, mad genius. Happy trees, happy trees. I like to make happy trees. Well, okay, <laughs> I meant for this to be a really simple exercise, but we ended up building quite a bit. And so we're gonna go take these trees now and finally duplicate them. And so if you haven't used your duplicate tool, that's the thumbstick to the right. So you go from hand tool to duplicate tool. And once you've duplicated, make sure to switch back to your hand tool. We can then stretch this tree to kind of make a little taller tree over here. Very nice. We can then duplicate again. 
can even scale it down with two hands to get like a really nice smaller tree over here. So a similar kind of variety. There we go, nice. And then we'll duplicate this again, put it right there. Make sure it's nice and snapped level, snapping off as I adjust this down. Very nice, so got a few trees there. Go ahead and select this tree and bring it over here as well. We'll slide that one up. Make sure it's just barely touching the ground. Nice. And then we've got these trees, which I think should go kind of on our lower area over here, kind of like have different varieties and different zones. So you can imagine this type of tree belongs over here. With your hand inside, click one time to select, and you'll notice you can ungroup by pressing the thumbstick to the left. Now that we've got this tree ungrouped, we can go in and take this little branch here and then turn snapping off, scale it down to make a little smaller bunch there. And now it's very much not the same tree. Awesome, okay, so that was a good duplication. And then we'll duplicate this one and move it up the hill bottom here and drag this down. Now, if you don't want to ungroup, another option is to say, duplicate this. You're gonna take your thumbstick, press forward towards the three dot icon, which will open up the properties panel. And then on the properties panel at the top, you have this zoom in button. We've now zoomed into the group and we can now make adjustments from inside the grouping. And so for instance, we could just grab this and just rotate it a little bit. And now this tree is a little bit more unique. We can then come back up here and click the zoom out button. I mean, and sometimes that's just the best way to go about it is to not worry too much and just put blocks down and have fun with it. Now over here, we've got some other little like crystal elements. Let's go ahead and take these crystals and you can just use these as they are. I mean, you can stretch them, you can flatten them. You can do a lot with these, just these basics. And so what we're gonna do is build a little crystal cave. About time that we add a little bit of a light source. And so I'm gonna go open up my menu, grab a cube, go to the style tab, make this light kind of a bluish light. And we're gonna go material glow and texture and all that doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that here. And then once we've created this, we can open up the properties panel and make it invisible, but enable light and shadow and we'll turn collidable off. There we go, perfect. Now with that, we now have a light source in here, which is awesome. And we can even scale it to kind of make it more voluminous. There we go. Fill this whole area from the top, kind of casting in from here. And we'll stretch it out. Nice. And then we can grab some of these. And it kind of looks like this is almost reflecting a bluish light. So I think maybe we'll put this one in here, right? So it's kind of like this light is glowing off of these orbs, right? And we could even have other colored lights to make this feel like there's different lights being cast off of these different crystals. So you see a little like attraction because there's those crystals that you can see. And as you walk in, you start to see the blues, the greens. It's a very cool little cave space. We have this respawn trigger. I'm not really worried if people fall off the edges, they're just gonna get respawned back to the start. What we'd like to do next though, is grab these kind of wooden planks. And so this is with align to texture turned off. We're gonna grab these, come on down here and build a little outdoor patio. So duplicate slide. So if you didn't catch that, let's undo. When you put your hand in here and then you grab the slide tool with duplicate selected, you can then slide it over and duplicate it. Now I have snapping turned off so I can get this precise. And so by precise, I just mean like not snapped exactly to it. And now that I've placed it, I can use my array tool by thumb sticking to the right on my left joystick. And you're gonna see that it just continues to place these. I don't know about you, but this plant is popping up everywhere in Horizon. I absolutely love this plant. And so does our outdoor patio. So we're gonna bring that down here, scale it down a little bit. The other thing a patio needs is Mercot designed couch. Absolutely gorgeous. Bring that in, rotate this, give it a nice little angle. And this is just a little outdoor space where you can watch the water roll by. So now you can imagine coming out here. Oh, this couch is tiny. Oh my goodness, I had no idea. Um, so this is a thing. Sometimes you don't realize what scale something is. And obviously I did not. <laughs> I thought I could go sit on this couch. Oh my goodness, I am so silly. So what we're gonna do- I built with those guys. Yes, Don't Merc forget builds to with these them. guys. Don't forget to delete them. And also make sure to turn spawn on start off so you don't accidentally spawn there. 
but and that they're wonderful will allow you for to doing attachables sizing yes. attachables this is the exact size of your avatar yeah so we're gonna lock our ground in place and then select all of these objects because this is what i want it to look like it's just not at the right scale that is more like it hanging out with some friends right here this is perfect but you know what it's a hot summer day i can feel my neck is sweating i need a little bit of a breeze and guess what we just so happen to have that's right the bundle comes with a fan this doesn't look like an outdoor patio fan though so let's take a look at how we can make this match select this color here and with this color selected so you go to your script tab hit stop and reset and then we can color these very easily we can zoom into this grouping here and let's say we don't need an outdoor light so we can delete the light fixture portion of this and kind of just leave it like that and maybe even duplicate this down to make it look pretty and another way to zoom out is to double click on your right trigger we don't have a ceiling so that's kind of works like i got this <laughs> that is an intense string i mean <laughs> you grab from this snap point an array tool like that and now it should be almost perfect hey there we go and now we can drop that down to the floor and paint it with this same metal texture which still looks absolutely hysterical. <laughs> it's so funny. I love it. Did you really have to build a fan right here? Like you're outside, dude. Who needs a fan? <laughs> Sometimes I like to do real stuff, but then really, if you just don't explore the, the weird stuff too, you're missing out. Yeah. Grab this beautiful window. Oh my gosh. Merck is going to work on a video to explain how he made this. You see how cool that is? Looking through that window is awesome. Use this as it is, or you can zoom into the grouping like we showed you earlier to adjust it and make it your own. <laughs> I know this room is weird because it's not really a room, but it feels cool, right? Like we have this example of some text where we got the A, B, C, and D, and it's showing how you can use a text object like this to create objects and make them match up and line up to create your text. <laughs> if you're into text, cabs use these four letters however you want but uh i recommend using merc's and tactic all the time it is so well, useful my dad's awesome he taught me to build just like this i'm sorry dad if you're dad's, watching. Dad's fan. <laughs> okay you guys we made it to the scripted section and i gotta tell you there's a lot of things here and some of the stuff you can just use like this flying platform is just cool right like you can just grab this whole thing and drag it down here. Boom, it's right there. It's waiting for you. Jump into your flying machine and off you go. Super dope. <laughs> and we'll go into exactly how to use the flying machine and like customize it in just a minute. But let's start with some of the more simple things like propellers also rotating. That's the same script we're gonna be using on this waterfall. Continuous rotation script. You'll see we have two options, no physics or with physics. And so let's go ahead and delete these and we're going to build this from the ground up. All you need to keep is this script box here. Waterfall, we're going to open up the properties panel, come down here to attached script and I click on the drop down and find the continuous rotation. We'll then select that and now you can see that we have options to use global rotation, which we do not want to use. We want to use local rotation. It's currently rotating in the wrong way. Uh, so we're going to want to fix that. So we'll start by typing in zero here because this is our rotation by. This is how much we're rotating by. And we know we're currently rotating along the wrong axes. So we'll click enter. And then let's see if we rotate by 180, for instance. Nope, still the wrong axes. And because these are Rotarians, sometimes these numbers kind of change on you. And there it is. Okay, we're getting close. Let's try rotating by 90 degrees is giving us the rotation that we want. We can see that the water is just constantly rolling down, which looks honestly quite nice, just like that. You can change the rotation delay to change how fast it rotates. So if we go to like two, it's going to rotate really fast. But you could also do that by just increasing the rotation speed or the rotation amount. And we don't have physics on this. Because this is not a grabbable object, we can turn will object return off because it does not need to return. Um, instant return. This doesn't really matter because it's not actually returning. I'm going to select our dad poster here. Okay, so with dad selected, let's go ahead and group it. To group, put your hand inside and then press the thumbstick to the left. So that's going to cause our grouping to enable. And now that we've grouped it, we're going to go inside. We're going to make this interactive and give it physics. And you know what? Let's make it grabbable. So we'll make it both. We're going to turn gravity off so that way it just hovers in space. And then we're going to go to attached script 
and attach the continuous rotation script. Now the continuous rotation, we have physics spin. So this is how much we're gonna physics spin. And we do wanna do physics, so we click has physics is on. And now when we let go, we should see it rotate. Might need to stop reset world. So let's go ahead and go back to our panel here. Stop, reset, and play. Okay, that's actually kind of cool. And then we do want the object to return, so that's on. And the delay on return is going to be five seconds, so it's gonna come back pretty quick. And instant return is turned off, so that way it does have a delay. Awesome, okay, so let's go ahead and stop, reset, and play the world. And we're gonna grab my dad. Nice, I grab dad. I can chuck dad and in five seconds, dad's gonna return. Two, one, and dad's back, yes! Similar to continuous rotation, we have object return. And you'll remember that we are using object return in continuous rotation, which is why it works so smoothly. And they're gonna be very, very similar. Instant allows it to quickly snap back and delay allows you to throw it and wait for it to come back. Let's go ahead and delete these. And then we're gonna go take a look at how we can use this in our world. We also have other object return, which we used when making the microphone. So if you haven't seen that video, I recommend checking it out to see exactly how we use that. You know what people love? Grabables. Group the fern edges together. So we're just going to select this whole piece here. We can group by putting our hand inside and pressing our thumbstick to the left. From the properties panel, let's start by making this interactive and grabable. We're not going to apply physics to this one, so it's just going to instantly return. So we go down to our attach script and find the object return script. Perfect. Delay, let's make our delay five seconds. Wait, there is no delay, what am I talking about? This is an instant, so delay doesn't actually apply, we're just using instant, and we're done. Actually, yeah, that was it. Okay, so that one's done. Um, let's go to the next one. So we're gonna open up the properties panel on this one, and on this one, we're gonna make it interactive and both physics and grabbable. And so we're gonna turn gravity off, so it'll just float there but you'll be able to throw it and it'll just go flying, which people absolutely love. I, I mean, I absolutely love, let's be honest. So now if we go back through here, we have the object return script. And this one, we wanna click on this Boolean and that turns it off. So now that it's off, we can set the delay. And I think the delay should be a max of five seconds. I mean, I really wanna play with this plant. So we're gonna set it to five seconds and that's it, that one's done. And now our last one here is physics material, right? So we go to physics material. Let's choose feather has a really unique property. And so uh, it should look really interesting when we throw it. So now we'll go back to our menu here, select the object return script, turn off instant return and give it a delay of five seconds as well. Okie doke, so as it turns out, we need to zoom into this grouping, branches non-collidable. So if you select all of them from inside the grouping, then open up the properties panel of the selection. Don't group them, but on the properties panel of the selection, we can make all of them collidable again. And there we go. We can grab this and it's like, what? That just, what? And then you grab this one. Oh, and that took off flying. That's never coming back. I'm not gonna lie. If you hit a physics object and it just goes off like that, it's gone. Um, <laughs> Same thing with this dad. I think you can just knock it. Dad's gone. I'm sorry, dad. He's gone. Next up, let's talk about respawning and teleporting players. So we're going to go back to our build menu. We're going to go to gizmos. I accidentally deleted the last spawn gizmo. My bad. Uh, and we're going to bring that spawn point back in. And we can unselect the top of it. Select this guy. Bring him down to ground level. And then open up his properties panel. We do want to spawn and start. So this is all perfect. And now we're going to come down here and open up the properties panel of our respawn trigger that's underneath the world. So we're gonna go bring that up, scale them down to about the same size. You can scale by grabbing and then pressing to the left to scale down and pressing to the right to scale up. Pretty neat. Now here you'll see that spawn point's empty. So we'll just drag the spawn point pill over. And so let's go ahead and create this from the scratch though. So if we go and bring out a spawn point, so we're gonna bring out a spawn point and we're going to bring out a trigger gizmo. We open up the properties panel on the trigger gizmo and then we can attach a script by clicking on the drop down, click on the respawn slash teleport script, and you'll see that it has a spot for an empty spawn pill right there. So we'll open up the properties panel in this one, and we do not want this to be spawn on start, so we select that, turn it off, and then we're going to grab this spawn point pill and drag it into the empty slot here, and now we've connected this trigger to this spawn point. Allow players to teleport to certain areas that they normally couldn't get to, and so over here, Merck has built this little like cave thing. Put this trigger in the waterfall. So when you walk into the waterfall, it causes you to teleport up here. 
And now this is pretty awesome. I love that. But let's go the opposite direction. So if we select this trigger and we select this spawn point and then duplicate them, these two both have the script attached and they reference each other. They don't reference the originals. If you only delete duplicated this trigger, it would still reference this guy. But because we duplicated both, we can put this back in the cave and have it return them back down here into the pool of water. So let's go ahead and jump into the waterfall and I'm on top of the world. There's a little campfire up here. Very nice. Hey, hey Merc. And then you uh -oh. can go back through and we're back. <laughs> it's very cool. Yes. This is awesome. Your bubbles for me are in the wrong spot. So I'm going to have to go into my personal space and come back, but they look cool. Next up, let's talk about this microphone. I don't recommend using the script for the microphone. I just recommend using the microphone and it's pretty straightforward to use. You press your index trigger to turn it off and on, and you can use your upper button to make it global, your bottom button to make it extended. And so that allows you to choose what type of voice settings you want. And when you let go, it goes back to the environment settings. And your environment settings can actually be set from this environment gizmo right here. And so your environment gizmo, our VoIP settings are set to default. So we could set them to extended by default um, or whisper or mute. I think in this world, I definitely want to go with default. I think this is a fine environment to use default. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to move this over here so it's more next to everything. Just like that to be together. And then let's take our microphone and just bring it down, right? So if you're on this couch, maybe you're someone who's important and you need access to a microphone to talk to everybody. Well, there it is. Before we go to the door, let's talk about this and how you can make your own staff. So this staff is already pretty awesome, right? So, you know, you can fire projectiles. It's a pretty cool thing. In fact, we're just going to leave this one uh, hiding right back here because it's so cool. I don't want people to see it. But if we wanted to make our own mystic staff, let's start by, uh, you know, building some basics. So we're going to go ahead and grab a cube, grab this pyramid shape. The Mystic Pencil Staff. I mean, that doesn't sound intimidating whatsoever, but, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so then we'll slide this up. It's in dark. Perfect. Okay, so we've got our pencil, and every pencil shooting thingy thing needs some effects. So we're going to go to our Gizmos tab, pull out a projectile launcher gizmo. You're going to want to point that straight up. We'll get to that in a second. You're also going to want a particle effects. And you're going to want a sound effect. Low whoosh one. I like low whoosh one. Okay. So we've got some sound effects here. We can go and adjust the properties on these. Let's go turn off play on start. Make the volume extra loud. Pitch it up just a little bit. Hit play. Nice. That's perfect. Change the distance down to like 27 so it's not annoying. And we'll go ahead and leave that open. On our visual effect here, we're going to turn it off on start and change the preset to hit ring, which is pretty cool. And there we go. So that's good there. Go ahead and snap these into place. So we're going to snap this into the center of that. There we go. Open up the properties panel. We're going to want to leave these property panels open for later. And then we're going to also do this with the sound effect. And then we're going to take our projectile launcher and take the projectile launcher. And we're going to snap that so that it faces forward of the pencil. Then we're gonna open up the properties panel, the projectile launcher, move this stuff over slightly. And then speed is going to be 15. We're going to do player collisions with all players, including owner, so all players. And we're not gonna do object collisions. Static collision is off. And we wanna add a little bit of gravity. So we're gonna go with default gravity of around eight. Scale of 0.1 is fine. Trail length scale, trail length scale. Oh, that's so cool. That must be new. Point uh, one as well. And projectile color is going to be, well, it needs to be dark. So like point one, point one, point one. Okay, very nice. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. So we'll go ahead and leave that. Oh, projectile preset. You have sphere. Rocket, pistol, grenade. So let's go ahead and use the um, rocket option, right? So this is a rocket uh, pencil. <laughs> okay, so, oh, I didn't mean to close You're that. You're finding rockets now, bro. Oh, yeah. Pencils. Select all the objects in your pencil. Put your hand inside. Thumbstick to the left to group it. Open up the properties panel. And then from our grouping here, we can set motion to interactive, grabbable. We'll even give it physics. And gravity is on. And then we're going to attach the Mystic Staff script. Okay, so we've attached Mystic Staff, and you'll see there's a few empty slots we need to fill out. 
like projectile launcher. Well, we just go ahead and grab that, drag that over. We need the world spawn point. So I guess we're gonna need to go over here and grab our world spawn point. Open up the properties panel on that. You press forward and hold on the three dot icon to bring the properties panel to you, which is pretty cool. Then we'll bring this over and drag that into world spawn point. Then we need our sound effects and visual effects. Now that we're done with this, we can close out of these. And we'll move this over to the side as we grab our particle effects. There we go, visual effects is linked in and our sound effect is also linked in. Awesome. Now let's go talk about some of these properties here. So under here we've got delay. So this is how fast does it return? I think 30 seconds is fine. Instant return is gonna be turned off. We want this to take 30 seconds and that's it. That's all of our settings, cool. So that's, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> we've built the Mystic Staff. Let's go ahead and give it a try. We're gonna leave it right here. Okay, here we go. Grabbing my pencil, looks pretty good. And if I press my trigger finger, oh, that is that is dark and it's got a, like a little red fiery. Wow, that is so cool. These new particle effects are awesome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah, there he goes, I hit him. Boop, boop. And our pencil will return. So you could like throw this off the edge and in 30 seconds, it'll come back. Next up, let's talk about doors. Now I do recommend just duplicating one of these doors and making the design yourself. And that's what we're gonna do. But if you did wanna make your door by attaching the script, there's a non-collidable counterpoint here, which allows it to rotate correctly. And so uh, just kind of keep that in mind when you're making these. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the rotating door, because I think there's a few things I'd like to show you with this one. So if we select the trigger and the door itself, and then we're going to bring them down here to our patio. Yeah. And then I want this patio to have a very unique feel. So we're going to do this, not a traditional door, but a kind of like garage door style. So you're gonna have to like, it's gonna be weird. So you can always hit this zoom in button to zoom in. And so for us, we're just gonna leave it as it is just to kind of demo it. And the way the script works is if we open up the properties panel of this trigger, you're gonna see that we have the script open door attached. Open door has options for how much do you wanna slide. You can change it to slidey. If you turn slidey on, then it slides rather than uh, rotating. And so door is this grouped object, so you have to reference. So remember the script is running on this trigger, so you attach the script to the trigger, and then you reference the door object that you want to rotate. And then the amount of time that it takes, we got it one second, and then and we've got a 90 degree rotation. And so this rotation is correct for this door, but you could try you know, your own rotation depending on which door you're using. So that's awesome too. Now let's go ahead and just give it a go and see how it works. Walk in and it opens up and you can walk inside and then it closes behind you. Yeah, this is a weird house. We're gonna go and make that look like it rotates around that, that axis. We come in and you've got this door and you walk up, the door opens. <laughs> You come to your patio and your view is partially ruined by a door. So maybe not the best place for a door. Actually, I've got a better idea for this. There we go. So five degrees less and it works. And you can jump off and it closes. And then when you like put your hand out, it'll open. Nice. And last but not least, we're gonna select the color of this wood tone here and just make sure that this looks identical. So now we've got a nice matching theme. You'll come in here, see your little door, and uh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's not bad though. It's not bad at all. Cool, so we've got our little patio. Oh my gosh, Parkour Master. Let's start by making keyframe motion. And similar to the previous one, I recommend starting with this design here and then using it to your own advantage rather than trying to build from scratch. You could, and if you do build from scratch, you're gonna start with this object here. This is your motion controller. And your motion controller is going to reference your stop trigger. So this is the stop button, your start trigger, which is your start button. Um, you're gonna have the moving object, which is the object that's gonna be moved. So that's this object here. And it's pretty easy to set up, especially if you've worked with any of the previous scripts that we just discussed. But for most people, including myself, you're, what you're gonna wanna do is just zoom into this object and bring whatever you want in with you. So if you have never brought an object into a group, go to your build menu and try this out. Grab like a square, just a simple square, and click on it once it's selected hit the zoom in button and it's gonna bring the object in with you. Once you unselect it, it'll leave it there. We can then turn our snapping on, snap that on right there. 
and then we can zoom out. And now we have increased the size of our object. Very, very cool. And now we have five keyframes already pre-built for us. And you'll note that when you open up the properties panel, the properties panel of a keyframe says it's a keyframe. That's the script that's been attached. You reference the motion controller. That's that invisible pyramid up there. And you tell it what number keyframe it is. It's important that these are all unique and they start at zero and move their way up. So uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. And uh, I believe this starts at zero. Maybe it starts at one. Oh, it starts at one. Okay, cool. So with that, let's go ahead and build ourselves a little like raft that floats down the river. That seems like a cool idea. So we're going to select everything. So we're gonna select this all, and we're gonna leave our motion controller there, and then we're gonna unselect this cube, unselect that, and then slide this down here. And so what we're gonna do is build a little like button on the ground, and so we're gonna scale this up nicely. And so when you stand in the player pause button positions, it's gonna cause them to play and pause. Cool, we know this is the first position, and the first rotation, and it slowly rotates this way. So we don't need to rotate this, so I think we can rotate like that. We'll go ahead and place this down here at the beginning of the river. We'll go ahead and rotate this one like this at the end of the river. And then these guys, because I don't need this, I just want it to go from here to there. I'm gonna move this down, so it's gonna go underneath the ground, and then this point is kind of a midpoint, so we're just gonna put it under the ground. And then this guy, we're gonna put underneath this guy so that the raft like rises out of the water and it just continues on this loop until you hit stop. And uh, so then we're gonna make this our raft. And so remember how we talked about zooming in and zooming out? Nice, nice little raft. Now we'll zoom out, so we'll double click to zoom out. Close this. And then we'll put this in position below the world so that way it's kind of in its previous position to starting and let's go give it a go so we go script stop reset and play don't feel like i got my rotations right but it's easy to fix rotations so we walk on the play button and in a few seconds oh whoa that is fast oh my gosh <laughs> uh not what i was expecting okay and then any second should come right through again so yeah it worked actually it worked perfect first time that was marvelous so is there a way to adjust the speed? I feel like the speed can be adjusted on the controller. So from our controller here, you have the delay time. This must be how long it takes to get there. So let's go set this to be 10 seconds. Look, the raft came up and look at that pace. That's perfect. We can even jump on it. Nice. It kind of feels like it's rafting our way down. And then when it gets to the end, we should kind of sink in. Oh no, and then we're, we're done. And then you can always hit the stop button or hit the continue playing it, so. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It does take a while to go underneath because we have so many keyframes. So what we can do for that is just delete a keyframe. <laughs> Welcome to Megatext 3. If you haven't used this, first of all, it's just gonna give you a lot of great information like how to create sprites, subscript, superscript, character spacing, line height, a line, opacity. Oh my gosh, there's so much in here. It is extremely valuable just from this formatting guide here. But what is Megatext? Well, if you open up the properties panel, as soon as you attach mega text to your text object gizmo, you will then have, <laughs> catch this, 24 lines that you can break your text into. You do have to create your own breaks and uh, that's not very difficult. You just use you know that symbol there to create a, a break, a line break. But what this really allows is imagine you're writing a large paragraph, you can break every sentence into its own line. So if you ever have to go back and make a change or an adjustment, this is so much easier and you can do up to 24 lines. A text object can hold up to 1000 characters. So go crazy, use it up. This is definitely gonna help you. And so just to kind of demo that real quick, build gizmos text object, open up the properties panel, click the drop down, select the mega text three script and you're going to see it's completely ready to be filled out. And all we have to do is type in hi space on the next line world. And I actually recommend leaving like gaps between lines. So like there's 24 spaces, so you can come back and make changes really easily. So just like, like that, we've got hi world, very cool. What if you wanna create your own flying platform? Well, I recommend you start with this one as your uh, base model. It's uh, just, it's already ready to use. You just simply customize your controller by zooming in and customizing it. You can change what sound is attached by referencing the sound here. You can change which platform is attached by referencing a different platform. Um, so, I mean, it's just, 
it's just pretty easy to do, you know? Like, I, I just recommend zooming in and editing. If you really want to attach the script, you have two objects. You have the other object return, which allows you to return both of these objects. So you remember how I had told you that you can use this and it's explained in another video. Well, basically all you do is reference the other grabbable object. So that's this grabbable here, but then the other object is self. And so by referencing this other grab when that object is released, then it returns itself as well. It's kind of just a hacky way to do it, but it's really quite valuable. We'll have a video coming out very soon on how we made this. Last but not least, version two, the ordered scoreboard. Check this out, super awesome. We do need to do some setup first. And if you open up the script, what you're gonna see inside of here is that you need to reference a player persistent variable. And so it's called score. So it's capital S C O R E. We can open up our build menu, head down to the settings page, go to player. And from player, we can create a new player persistent variable with a capital S C O R E. Booyah. There we go. So we've got our score variable in. And once you've created your score variable, you're all set. There's a letterboards option, world letterboards, define world specific leaderboards here and use them in scripts. Ooh, I am so excited for this. That is amazing. I can't wait to check that out. Yeah, once you've got your score set up, you're done. I mean, seriously, that's all there is to it. You've got a scoreboard that now works. Um, there are some options on the scoreboard that you're gonna wanna pay attention to. Like if we open this up, you can determine uh, the delay how frequently is it being updated? I recommend five seconds. It's relatively infrequent. It's not gonna cause a lot of lag to your world. Um, you've got a min and max value if you have a random start score. So see, we have random start score set to on. I recommend turning this on only if you need to, like, to start with a random amount of money. So you could say, when you join, you get random 50 to 100 coins. Um, so that would be an option. But otherwise, you wanna turn this off. And then that's, that's it. That's all the customization you do from here. And then there's a little bit you can do on the scripting side by going in and editing the script. So definitely recommend learning how to script a little bit, take your time learning it. But uh, when you're able to, you'll be able to go in there and make really nice custom scoreboards. And so we're not gonna use this today, but that is how you can use that in your world. We are done, you guys, <laughs> look at this awesome world. And uh, so if you're new to Horizon and creating, I'm gonna show you right now how we publish this world. But if you haven't already, be sure to like the video, Make sure to subscribe to the channel for awesome content. If you're interested in the video essentials bundle and you don't have access, make sure to leave your Oculus username in the comments so we can add you to it so you can import this into your worlds. And yeah, this was just a really Ooh. quick how you can use it to upgrade your worlds. I mean, it was, whew, it's pretty cool, hey, right? Yo. Like there's a lot you can do with this. So I look forward to seeing how you guys use this to level up your worlds. And if you have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments and we'll see you in Horizon. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can publish this. And so you're going to see that this says published world page. It's not available. Um, we have posts and feedback, manage collaborators. If we head back into build mode and then head to our world page, we're going to need a thumbnail image. We're going to call this the video essentials build. And so this isn't the kit. This is just the build. And what can people do? Check out our use of the essentials kit. Comfort rating is comfortable. Tags is adventure. And player settings is gonna go up to like, I don't know, 12, 16, what's our capacity? Wow, we can go really high in this world. Uh, 19, nope, we're over. 18 it is. Wow, this world technically supports 18, that's cool. Um, emotes, definitely allowing emotes. And I'm pretty happy with everything I'm seeing here. The one thing I do want to do is add a couple doors to get people around. And so I'm thinking we go create a little door section over here. So a door is a gizmo. Go to your build gizmos and pull out a door gizmo. Go ahead and drop that right there. And it's nice to have a door to the plaza if you're a nice person like me. All right, so we're going to select this door, turn snapping on, and then I have my snapping set to half a meter. So I can go over by one meter and then hit array to get a few doors in here. And that is what I'm looking for. Now this one here, I want to set up to go to the video essentials bundle. So if people who don't have it, don't have it, they can go get it, select. Oh, look, it looks like. The plaza got winter themed out. There's a new picture. Oh, I can't wait to go check that out. Holiday World Tours, gotta drop a door there. Bingo, yep, bingo is a good one. And last but not least, I think I'm gonna drop in a door to Pixel Plummet. I love that world. Pixel Plummet is awesome. So, booyah, there we go. Feeling pretty happy with that. Got some nice doors here. Nice shout out to a few friends. And yeah, we're done. This world is ready to be published. So I gotta go take a picture somewhere. 
I think the best place to take a picture is right here with my pencil with my buddy Merck. So Merck, come on and hop in here. I'm gonna open up my camera and there we go. Got Merck, got a smile on. E. And you gotta wait for the picture to save. Once it's saved, we can check it out. My face looks horrible, but we're gonna go with it. <laughs> that was fine. And so, yeah, we'll post that to the world page. Why the heck not? Click submit. And now we're gonna go into build mode. And from inside of build mode, head back to the world tab, click update, select the thumbnail you want to use, click on the back arrow. You'll note that it doesn't work the first time. You have to go back and do it a second time. And voila, there we are. Cool. So we're done. We can go ahead and hit the publish button and this world's gonna be published to the world. And you can go check this out right now. Go uh, find the Video Essentials build if you guys wanna go take a look at this world in person. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching again. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and we'll see you in Horizon. Bye.